Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, November 27th, 2021. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and God's word today as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin by reading the final verses of Psalm 66. Come and listen, all who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth, and praise was on my tongue. If I had been aware of malice in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. However, God has listened. He has paid attention to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God. He has not turned away my prayer or turned his faithful love from me. In our Old Testament readings today, we move to the prophecy of Isaiah. We hear the beginning of that prophecy as we read a portion of chapter 1. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of King Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah of Judah. Listen, heavens, and pay attention, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's feeding trough, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. O oh, sinful nation, people weighed down with iniquity, brood of evildoers, depraved children, they have abandoned the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel. They have turned their backs on him. Why do you want more beatings? Why do you keep on rebelling? The whole head is hurt and the whole heart is sick. From the sole of the foot even to the head, no spot is uninjured. Wounds, welts, and festering sores not cleansed, bandaged, or soothed with oil. Your land is desolate. Your city is burned down. Foreigners devour your fields right in front of you. A desolation, like a place demolished by foreigners. Daughter Zion is abandoned like a shelter in a vineyard, like a shack in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. If the Lord of armies had not left us a few survivors, we would be like Sodom. We would resemble Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What are all your sacrifices to me? asks the Lord. I have had enough of burnt offerings and rams and the fat of well-fed cattle. I have no desire for the blood of bulls, lambs, or male goats. When you come to appear before me, who requires this from you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing useless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons and Sabbaths and the calling of solemn assemblies, I cannot stand iniquity with a festival. I hate your new moons and prescribed festivals. They have become a burden to me. I am tired of putting up with them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will refuse to look at you. Even if you offer countless prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves. Cleanse yourselves. Remove your evil deeds from my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do what is good. Pursue justice. Correct the oppressor. Defend the rights of the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Come. Let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are crimson red, they will be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The faithful town, what an adulteress she has become. She was once full of justice. Righteousness once dwelt in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross to be discarded. Your beer is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, friends of thieves. They all love graft and chase after bribes. They do not defend the rights of the fatherless, and the widow's case never comes before them. Therefore, the Lord God of armies, the mighty one of Israel, declares, 
Ah, I will get even with my foes. I will take revenge against my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and will burn away your dross completely. I will remove all your impurities. I will restore your judges to what they were at first and your advisors to what they were at the start. Afterward, you will be called the righteous city, a faithful town. Zion will be redeemed by justice, those who repent by righteousness. At the same time, both rebels and sinners will be broken, and those who abandon the Lord will perish. In our New Testament readings, we move to Peter's first letter and hear about the living hope that we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Peter, an apostle of Christ Jesus, to those chosen, living as exiles, dispersed abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient and to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being guarded by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. You rejoice in this, even though now for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials, so that the proven character of your faith, more valuable than gold, which, though perishable, is refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though not seeing him now, you believe in him and you rejoice with inexpressible and glorious joy, because you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that would come to you searched and carefully investigated. They inquired into what time or what circumstances the spirit of Christ within them was indicating when he testified in advance to the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. These things have now been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Angels long to catch a glimpse of these things. Our writing for today comes from Martin Luther. It finally came in time to the most perfect promise of all, that of the New Testament, in which, with plain words, life and salvation are freely promised and actually granted to those who believe the promise. And he distinguishes this testament from the old one by a particularly, particular mark when he calls it the New Testament. For the Old Testament given through Moses was not a promise of forgiveness or of eternal things, but of temporal things, namely, of the land of Canaan by which no man was renewed in spirit to lay hold of on the heavenly inheritance. Wherefore also it was necessary that, as a figure of Christ, a dumb beast should be slain, in whose blood the same testament might be confirmed, as the blood corresponded to the testament and the sacrifice corresponded to the promise. But here Christ says, the new testament in my blood, not somebody else's, but his own by which grace is promised through the Spirit for the forgiveness of sins, that we may obtain the inheritance. According to its substance, therefore, the Mass is nothing but the aforesaid words of Christ, take and eat, and so on. As if he were saying, Behold, O sinful and condemned man, out of the pure and unmerited love with which I love you, and by the will of the Father of mercies, apart from any merit or desire of yours, I promise you in these words the forgiveness of all your sins and life everlasting, and that you may be absolutely certain of this irrevocable promise of mine. I shall give my body and pour out my blood, confirming this very promise by my very death, and leaving you my body and blood as a sign and memorial of this same promise. As often as you partake of them, remember me, proclaim and praise my love and bounty toward you. 
and give thanks. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, In Thee is Gladness. Since he is ours, we fear no powers, not of earth, nor sin, nor death. He sees and blesses in worst distresses. He can change them with a breath. Wherefore the story tell of his glory with hearts and voices, all heaven rejoices in him forever. Alleluia. We shout for gladness, triumph or sadness, love him and praise him and still shall raise him glad hymns forever. Alleluia. And we pray, stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.